uh, is invented by someone and we take it, we we'll just learn it for now. What is W? W is, I say it is given. But W is given as two psi Psi minus one. Okay, you definitely know this, but let's ask ourselves a little bit, right? What is the meaning of each symbol? What is two? Just a scalar, right? A number. What is psi cat? Psi cat. I'm only talking about cat. I just told you earlier is the equal superposition, right, of all the vector, one over two to the power n, summation x equal to zero, all the way to two to the power n minus one x. Okay. What is this? He said transpose com and compress conjugate of psi, which is just the bra version of the psi, right? So do you still remember what is the cat times bra? A matrix, outer product, right? Just remember this. So indeed, this is a matrix, right? And then you subtract i. Do you know what is i? Identity, right? So this is given, right? So now, then let's see if it really try to flip, right? Let's first look at any vector for any vector. I call it gamma. Equals to gamma zero psi plus gamma one psi perpendicular. I'm using the same trick we did for V. For any vector, right? Instead of beta, I call it gamma. You can call it beta also. Let me do a better job here. I can always represent it as a component that is parallel to psi and a component that is perpendicular to psi, right? Any vector, I can do that. Right? So what does it mean? I try to draw the same figures that we have been drawing. What is the perpendicular one? The vertical one? Huh? Which vector is that? Do you remember? Huh? A. Oh. Is the vector we are looking for, right? What is the horizontal one? A perpendicular. This is what we are doing, right? And we also have this vector psi. Okay, this is what I show you, right? We have three important vector. Okay. Now, uh, for any gamma, let's say here, right? Uh, probably I did not draw to the scale. I should have unit vector or whatever, but don't worry about that, right? I can. Okay, and of course I should also draw the perpendicular vector, right? Here psi perpendicular is perpendicular to psi, okay? For any vector, gamma, I should be able to decompose it to two components. This is gamma zero of psi, and this is gamma one of psi perpendicular, right? Is that okay? Right? I can always do that. I'm allowed to do that. So with this vector, then let me start to see what is the effect of W on gamma. Okay? So let me write it down. This is equal to 2 psi psi 
gamma minus i gamma. Do you agree? Do you agree with what I'm doing? Apply the vet the operation into gamma, right? So the whole thing apply to gamma and then distribution rule, gamma to the first term, gamma to the second term. Just multiplication. What is this? Inner product. This is a scalar. And this is vector. So after this rotation, of course, it's a vector, right? Everything looks correct. But I, don't, I need to expand it. I further expand this to two psi, psi, gamma, psi, plus two psi, psi, gamma one psi perpendicular minus one i uh yeah let me just put i gamma zero psi minus i gamma one psi perpendicular. Can you follow? Do you see what I'm doing here? I just substitute gamma by this one. Right? So the first term is the whole thing times gamma zero psi and then, mine, and then the second term is the whole thing times gamma one psi perpendicular. Right? And then, of course, I have this minus i, which is identity. I just copy it. What is this term? You should know how to do it. What is this term? What is gamma zero? Ask yourself again. Is a scalar, vector, or matrix? Just look at this. What is gamma zero? It's a scalar. It's a scalar that I can write here. So what do you do with scalar in the product? You can pick, put anywhere. Put at the end, put in the front, whatever. Whatever you like, right? Then what, do you, what is left? No, what, what is left after you take away gamma zero? Inner product of psi, and what is that? One, because it's normalized, right? Very good. So the first term is two psi gamma zero. How about the second term? What is this? Great, he said it is zero. Because first gamma one is a scalar, you take it out, right? And psi times psi perpendicular, it's just like x dot y hat, zero. And it's very clear here, they're perpendicular. You don't have anything overlap, cosine 90 degree, zero, right? So the second term is gone. And then for the rest, you will get negative gamma zero psi minus gamma one psi perpendicular. What is this first two term? Very confusing, but it should be easy. As easy as kindergarten, the two minus one, yeah? Two apple minus one apple, right? Gamma, 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 I just put it at the end, make you confused, right? This is just gamma psi, right? This is just a number. Gamma zero. Gamma naught is a number, right? So this is just gamma naught psi minus gamma one. Perpendicular. Is that okay? Now compare to the original gamma, what is the difference between these two vectors? the minus size on the perpendicular part. 
So basically, that is what we get. This is negative gamma 1, right? I get this vector. When I apply W to gamma. When I apply W to gamma, I get still, I still get r zero psi but i get negative r, not r gamma but negative gamma one psi perpendicular now what i'm showing you just to show you again the w operation given by this matrix is working as what i uh promised earlier it rotates about fate as uh, psi by the angle between them right by the two times of the angle or you say it flipped about this side right but the most important is i would like you to be able to do this calculation yourself right in our class we don't go too deep but however i really want to make this type of calculation become something very easy for you night when you see zero times one you know it is zero one plus two minus one you know it is one all this elementary calculation distinguish distinction between the scalar vector and matrix and all this basic rule i hope you can master this skill and this actually are just linear algebra you can use elsewhere if you want to continue on quantum computing, you need to be very good in using this thing, right? And now you know, learn all of this. What left is just famili familiarity. Keep practicing. Yeah. Identity term is here, right? This uh, identity times the vector is still the vector itself. Yeah? So just one, I don't write it out. So it does flip about uh, about what psi, right? Okay, and flip it clockwisely. So with this, then let's talk about. How do we implement it, right? I gave you the W, right? But you should be able to implement in a quantum computing computer or with quantum gate. Uh, one of the way is this. Again, W equals to two psi outer product minus I, okay? And we remember that psi is the superposition. So I think I did something wrong here. It should be N over two. Okay, n over 2. 2 to the power n over 2. 2 to the power n over 2. Summation x equal to 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 x, right? How do I create this one? Do you remember? How do I create this equal superposition state? You should know that very well. Whenever people say, I want superposition, what gates do you use? Hadamard gate, even you don't know why. 90% of the chance is correct. Okay, Hadamard gate. And it is this, if you remember. Refer to the Hadamard gate video, right? We already learned this, right? We even learn if it is not zero, but arbitrary y, what the results will be. But we start with zero, n cubic zero, and then we apply the n cubic Hadamard gate. We will get equal superposition. Okay? So if that is the case, now let's check you again, right? I could have tested this in midterm one. You should be able to show me actually, but I did not. If Hadamard gate is written, I mean, if this side can be written in this way, then how about the bra version of it? How should we write it? The transpose, yes. Then what is it? What is transpose? How do you write? We are not writing a matrix form, right? We are writing a bracket form. How do you write it to represent the transpose? What, what we call it? 
Oh, okay. The 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 okay. We have two things. We have a matrix. We also have a vector. You're right. We do the dagger, the Hermitian, right? In order to get the matrix form, the adjoint of Hermitian. I say the wrong. The adjoint of H, right? But how about this one? How do I write the bra version? And maybe maybe I'm not asking the question correctly, right? Just write the bra version. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I agree. Where I, okay? Where do I put the matrix? <laughs> where do I put the matrix? Left or right? Right hand side. Now, if you forgot, go back to the Hubert Spade law rule that we learned earlier, right? Do you really remember the correspondence? A on alpha correspond to what? Dual space. Is dual space correct to correspond to what? Alpha A dagger. Right? You need to remember this. Okay? You need to be very good in this. I hope that you can keep practicing and know this skill well. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science. Right? Just some rule. Okay? So this one should be H. Right? How about the dagger? Yeah. H is, let's check again, right? H equals to 1 over square root 2, 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Yeah? Although I have tensor product, but each of them I can do it individually. Where's H dagger? Yeah, it will be the transpose. What is the transpose? The same, right? And it's real, right? So it's equal to itself, right? So when I write in this way, it's not because I forgot about the equation. It's because I know that H is permission, right? So I just write it in this way. Is that okay? So if that is the case, what is this one? What is this outer product? How do we write it? Just combine them. Can someone tell me? Uh, here is some typo. Yeah. H, tensor product, n time. Yeah. Nope. Uh, hold on. Right? Uh, we will answer your question later. Good. Good question. Do you agree that I can put them together? I uh, just do substitution, right? You should be brave to do substitution, but then check it carefully, right? These are new to you, so do not sit there and then try to think too much. Just follow the rule, do the substitution, and ask yourself if that's correct. This one is what. Matrix. How about this one? Matrix. How about this one? Outer product. Also matrix. This is matrix. Matrix times matrix times matrix. Matrix. At least in terms of dimensionality, I'm correct. Right? And check it carefully. Yes, I'm correct. And then you say, can I just cancel the H? Because H times H equal to what? Remember? I. You heard yourself, right? Can I? Of course not, right? Because this is matrix. Can you swap the matrix? A times B, not necessarily equal to B times A. If you, yeah, it's not commute, right? Here, if you want to cancel, you need move to here first. You cannot just cancel in this way. Can you move to here? You cannot. Because this one times H is not necessarily equal to H times this one. Okay? So that's a good question, right? And you can try it, right? So I spent a lot of time, but it's good, right? This exercise, you really need to uh, be familiar with this. Therefore, W equals to 2H tensor product N. This is just the gate, right? And this gate is also, I can handle, we can construct H0 
outer product zero minus I say that I'm going I do this. I wonder if you agree. What should it minus? Two side side minus I, right? I but I dare to do H tensor border N I H tensor border N I. Is this okay? Exactly. Right. This is what you were asking for. I can see another way. I times H equal to H times I. I move H to here. Then H and H cancel. Then it becomes I again. Yeah, exactly. Is that okay? I just insert the H. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to make this like this. This is how I implement W. Okay, why can I do this? Distribution law, H to here and H to here. And then from the right H to here, H to here, it gives me this expression. A little bit complicated, but this is uh, important, right? This skew is important. I hope that you can uh, follow and you 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 can be you are very confident in this regard yeah at the very top is one yeah this one is like the yeah if you look at this actually you will see that this one is to uh flip about the side uh i mean flip about yeah Flip about uh, it is side perpendicular, right? Yeah, flip about side perpendicular because just uh, plug in this, you will see that. And if you are very uh, familiar with this, because think about this negative i, you flip f, make everything by negative, right? If you multiply a vector by i, you keep it the same, right? Multiply a vector by negative i, everything become negative, right? All bases stay, right? And then I add back two parts of the uh, psi, right? So psi is still itself. Negative 1 plus 2 equal to 1. So psi is not changed, but everything else becomes negative. Yeah, I mean, uh, for all the... Uh, Computer scientists, this is very straightforward to them because this is uh, they play a lot, right? It's a little bit unclear to us, but now we prove that this is the case. But now you ask, right? How do you come up with it? You look back, you do see this, right? I want to flip something. Then I just multiply by negative one. But then I do not want certain part to get flipped. Multiply by negative one first and then plus two for that part. Then I get what I want. In this case, I want to flip all the vector. So I multiply negative i, except psi plus psi. And then you may say, how do I come up with psi outer product psi? Then you remember this is just the projector. Project your vector to psi uh, to get the psi component. Yeah? Do you remember the projector op projection operator, everyone? Yeah? You want to project a vector to a certain vector is using this one, right? Go back to the video about this uh, projection operator. And that's how they came up with this. Yeah. So good. Now we know W, we know V, we know all the vector, and we know the algorithm. The last thing we need to know is what is theta. Once I know theta, I just keep flipping, flipping, flipping. And then I need to show you again this, how many times you need to flip to get A. Then we are done with the algorithm. Okay, so what is the angle between A perpendicular and psi, right? Then, very good, this is 2D. So we can do what? Cosine pi minus theta equals to what? Alpha, I mean A. 
inner product with side. Is this okay? This is the first thing we learned in the almost the first class, right? The video. Inner product. We start with inner products with 2D. Right? Remember what is A dot B? We say A dot B is just this, right? Equals to A B cosine theta. Right? And this is one because why they are one here? All the vector are normalized in quantum computing. Right? So that's why the cosine theta equal to A inner product with psi. I mean cosine pi minus theta, I'm sorry, right? Because I'm talking about this vector and this vector. And theta is the angle between psi and psi perpendicular. So it's pi minus pi divided by two minus theta. Okay. Let's find out what is A inner product of psi with psi. We plug in psi. Psi is this one. It's the equal superposition of no. All the vector. Make sense? That's why we have been seeing saying psi is one over square root two summation of all x. One over square root two summation of all x is psi. Okay. It's just like in the three D case. In the three D case, right? Do you remember the three D case? C, x, y. What I'm doing is what is z. Inner product with psi, and this psi is what? 1 over square root 2 x hat plus y hat. Right? The inner pro this is just a linear combination, right? And actually, I missed the c. I actually missed one. The c, I'm sorry. And let me write a better, write it in a better way. Should be x hat plus y hat plus z hat. Because this is the definition of psi. So this is not over 2, right? Uh, what is the normalization constant? What's that? 3, right? This is just an example. Right here, you have this one. What is the inner product between A and this guy? Can you tell me? I'm not going to show you, right? Think about that. What is that? You basically need to ask you what is A, right? What is A in a product with the superposition of all other vector? Now let's just do it step by step. Do it by distribution. What is that? Do you see that? Okay, so this is equal to 1 over 2 to the power n over 2. What? 0, 1, a, 2 to the power n, minus 1. What is this? He just said what? Do you hear what he say? These are basis vectors, right? And they are orthonormal. So a dot zero, zero. A dot one, zero. Until a dot a, which is one. So what do you get? A dot a equal to one. The rest are zero. Is that okay? Just like there, here. C dot x, 0, C dot y, 0, C dot c, 1. Only 1 over square root 3 left. Only 1 over n to the power 2 left. 
is the value of n to the power to the power n over two. If n is one thousand, what is the value? Two to the power five hundred. What is that? Yeah, try that. Two to the power five hundred. Use your calculator. What do you get? Two to the power five hundred. Astronomical. Two three point two times ten to the power Oh, I'm 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 surprised it does not overflow. How about two to the power ten thousand? <laughs> it got overflow, right? The point is, this is very small, and that is quantum computing. Five hundred qubit. Oh no, this is not. Yeah, this is five hundred qubit, right? What you're doing, right? To the power five hundred. This is super small. Does it make sense? First of all, yeah, he just said that, right? To the five hundred is what, ten to the power one hundred something. No, no, no. N is still five hundred. Not, not okay, okay. Uh, so no, yeah, if it's two to five hundred, you're right. Then yes, we need one hundred, one thousand qubit. You're right. Okay, but 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 okay. I'm just inaccurate. I'm not wrong. <laughs> okay, still in the right order. Yes, we still want to do quantum computing. <laughs> okay, ah, uh, very small, right? Really, really small. So when it is is really small, then what does it mean? What is cosine pi over two minus theta? It is just sine theta. Now, it doesn't need to be small, right? Cosine pi over two is just minus theta is just sine theta, right? This is just the trigonometry equation. But when this is very small, sine theta equal to what? Theta. Right? You can try your calculator. Sine zero point zero 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 one should be 0 0.0001 and then 0, 0, 0 something, right? So this is theta, right? So now we get theta. So we say theta equal to one over two to the power n over two, okay? But do you remember what is, this n is number of the qubit, right? n is the number of qubit and n, capital N equal to two to the power n is the number of entries you want to search. The problem of the size. Okay, so this is just equal to one over square root n. Is that okay? Now you start seeing something, square root n, related to the, old, the, the complexity of this problem. Yeah? But now you know it's very small, 1 over square root n. 2 to the power 500 square root, OK? Yeah. Yeah, but square root, but square root, yes, I need to do a lot. Yeah. Okay, is it a big circle? Think about that. Think about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. You, yeah, you need to do many iterations, but is there a circuit, a real circuit? Yeah, yeah you you do every time you do need to do what uh square root n of w times v times that is right but remember in classical you need to search for n times here i only need to do it for square root n times of course you still a lot look at this if i have one million uh entry i still need to do it one thousand times if i have one trillion i still need to do it one million times it's right but however, I don't need to do it one trillion time. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that 
then of course at this stage we are not be, we are not able to do that that's why you need to have a very high accurate quantum gate so that's why you need 1000 qubit to get a fault tolerant tolerant physical qubit yeah okay. of course so that's why all the algorithm we are going to discuss is not working today it's not working but if they were then they they there will be a big breakthrough yeah. right yeah because you want to solve large problem you definitely need to have a lot of operation even it's lost in lot scale right but you're right uh so many operations it means all the error will keep accumulating so in now nowadays quantum computer we cannot do anything and that is true because if you can do something you're trillion trillion near already yeah you very good point right if you cannot solve the error problem, no, no, no way to use gates model, right? That's why they now mostly use the quantum annealing that we mentioned in natural one, right? Very, very good point. Yeah. Ah uh, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just quickly just uh, review again uh, what it does. We all know already, right? So for v. We apply to Y. I just want to draw one more time. But this is important for us to do the calculation. I'm just repeating, okay? This is A, right? And this is uh, Psi, right? So for any Y, what does it do when we apply V on Y? What does it do? Do you remember? You will flip about A perpendicular, right? Flip about A perpendicular. So I'm going to call this, let me call this gamma, maybe delta, because we have used gamma already in this class. Delta, then here is also delta. This is V, Y. Is that okay? And remember, we have theta equal to 1 over square root n here, which is very small, like what you say. Okay? So, the point is, it rotates. Remember, it rotates y clockwise by 2 Delta. It rotates clockwise by two, to two delta. Right? This is the summary. Just now we only look at the flip. Now just don't think about the flip, right? Here. It rotates y clockwise by two delta, and delta is the angle between y and y and a perpendicular. Right? That's it. Any questions? Okay, yeah, let you complete, finish copying. I did not add anything new, but I just want you to remember it rotates by 2 delta, okay? Now, what's the effect of W again? Again, I'm repeating. Right, if I have A here, have a perpendicular, right? And then I have this. Always write down the free angle, right? I know this is one over square root capital N. And then I have a, a y here, for example. And here I call it gamma also, right? But this time gamma is between y and phi what does it do it rotates y by two gamma maybe i don't call, call gamma because you thought that it's the same angle as the last one right what, what should we call it 
uh, theta, we have theta, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. I have not used delta, right? Oh, I use delta. Okay, gamma, delta. Eta, how about eta? Right, eta. Anti-clockwise. Okay, so with all this, we can really try to find out how much time it takes to find the solution. Okay, so again, what do we do in this Goofus algorithm? We have three vector, A, A perpendicular, and Psi. We all know their property, and A is what we're looking for. We have two operations. One operation is V, rotate any vector by delta when the delta is angled between that vector and a perpendicular. Another also operation is rotate anti-clockwise by eta to eta, where eta is the angle between the psi and the y. Okay. So what is the effect of WV? Let me see. Still have more. Where's the effects of WV, right? When I say WV, what do you apply first? Can you tell me? Apply V first, because I'm writing it in an equation, right? So you apply from the right one first, right? My question is, what is the effect of WV? So let's do it slowly. A a perpendicular, fine, nothing new, you know that already. And this is theta equal to 1 over square root n. And what should I do, right? I will start with a vector called y. Any y, right? So it doesn't matter as long as I have y there, what it does, right? We want to know. Now, y has an angle which is delta between y and phi, okay? So now, if I apply v to y, what do you get? Do you remember? I just told you, rotate y clockwise by how much? By how much? Let's take a look. You are right, but everyone take a look. Rotate by how much? By the angle between y and a perpendicular, right? Times 2. What is the angle between y and perpendicular in this case? Yeah, delta plus theta. So you rotate by delta plus theta times 2. Okay, so it comes to here, right? This is V, Y, with this angle theta plus delta. Now, I apply W to it, right? Apply W to VY. This is VY. What does it do? It rotates VY anti-clockwise. By okay, good. He said by both both of them say two times two theta plus delta. Why? Because you rotate it by two times the angle between phi and y, right? The angle between phi and y in this case is 2 theta plus delta now, right? It's theta plus theta plus delta. So what is the effect? Let me, uh, this becomes W, V, Y. And you just told me that this one is 2 theta plus delta, right? So how much did I rotate y in this case? 
to theta. Yeah, because I was delta to the phi now becomes two phase plus, plus delta, right? So no matter what phi you what y you have, eventually it just rotated by two theta clockwise. So this is important. WV rotates any vector by two theta, which is equal to two divided by square root n. Okay, one operation rotate by two divided by square root n, right? Therefore, how many times do I need to rotate it so it aligns with A? Oh, wonderful. To align, align with A means I get the solution because now the vector becomes uh, A, right? I, I need to say something I, 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 like too fast. So, now let, let's look at the top. I did not do it well, okay? So I'm going to say one. Then on the top, one, look at this. We start, start with phi, okay? I create phi and, and then keep Okay, I need to stop it, otherwise it won't record. Keep applying WV each time get closer to A by 2 theta, right? Now, theta is small, but, but that's okay. So, so the number of WV I need who align with A is equal to pi divided by 2 minus theta divided by 2 theta, right? Because the angle between phi is pi divided by 2 minus theta, right? The angle between phi and A is not pi over 2. It's pi over 2 divided by theta. And each time I rotate by theta, right? So this is equal to what? Pi divided by 4 theta minus 1 over 2. And what is theta? 2 divided by square root n, right? I just told you that theta, oh no, no, no 2. Uh, theta is 1 over square root n, not 2, sorry. Right? Theta is 1 over square root n and minus 1 over 2, which is 0 to pi over, all, over 4 square root n minus 2, 1 over 2. But, one, but n is very large, right? We're talking about 1 billion of operations, 1 trillion of operations, so it's 1 million. 1 billion 1 minus 1 over 2 is what? Just 1 million. Do you see that? So I need square root n time of rotation in order to find my solution. Yeah. No. Cap no. Capital N is the number of entries. Right? We need to search. Small n, yeah, so this is a little bit confusing. Small n is the number of qubit. So 2 to the power n equal to capital N. Right? So, yeah. Very good, right? So, this one, we, we do it very slowly, but I hope you can appreciate it. It, uh, you know, 
how to construct the vectors and how it operates. And even you can derive the algorithm. You know that it takes square root n of time to do the computation. Now, where do you do the computation? It's com the ma majority time is for the V operation because the V contain the F of X, the Oracle. And that's why we say that this is square root N. We assume all other operation, for example, W, right? Maybe W can be long, but uh, it's do I mean, we just say that it's dominated by V. Okay, because that is the difficult calculation we want to tackle. Yeah. So in that case, what's the number? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why quadratic speed up is not that appealing, but still a lot. Think about one trillion versus one trillion versus one million. Right? What is one trillion second and what is one million second? One million, I think, is about 10 years, right? I don't know. Can you try one million divided by 360 divided by, I mean, it's 3600 divided by 24. 3600 divided by 24 divided by 365. What is that? Only 0 0.031? One million? Second? Maybe, maybe you're right, right? But anyway, it's talking about less than uh, one year or something, right? But then it become one trillion, then you're talking about more than one million years. That's a big deal. <laughs> you see what I mean? One million and one trillion is a big difference. Not even my, the difference between my assets and Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, right? They are only in the billions order. And mine is not in million anyway. <laughs> 11 days only. Oh, I see. So if 1 million second, 11 days, right? And think about what is 1 million 11, or 10 million days. Longer than our lifetime, 10 million days, right? So some of them I, I can only compute uh, after of many centuries. I can get it in 11 days. There's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So finally, yeah, the, but it's good you challenge this, right? This order of magnitude is very important. You need to feel it. And indeed, in some cases, like what you said, it's useless. If some of them need to take uh, one quadrillion, quintillion, or I don't know what they call it, you use this quadratic algorithm, it's still useless for me, right? No, oh, oh, when we talk about speed up, it's talking about how many less critical operations you need, right? When now I say speed up is square root n, it's already talking about uh, the operation. Originally, I need 1 million operation. I only need 1,000 now. It's the same. Yeah. Okay, so how do we implement the algorithm? This is what we need to do. First, I start with the zero state, and then I do the tensor uh, Hadama gate, right? Then I get the equal superposition. You all know how to do this. And this is n qubit. And then what do we do? We go into this quantum oracle, which is just V. Remember what it is? Uh, okay, I'm kind of, uh, okay, maybe I have another slide to talk about this. I will implement it later. Uh, then we have this, right? Quantum, uh, is that okay? This is the what? Do you remember? V equal to negative one to the power F of X. But I cannot just do this. If you see this, you think it's just a scalar. I should say V operate on some vector, right? And after this, we use the W, and we prove the W already. And this is the so-called Goofers diffusion operation. And after this, you will get 
something closer to A. Okay? And then you repeat. Now, that is the point, the difference between classical and quantum computer, right? In classical, you need to build a circuit, square root n time. But here is quantum computer. You still just need so many qubits, but you apply the laser pulse or a microwave pulse, square root n times. Then you will keep rotating, and eventually the answer is A. Most of them is A, most of the components. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, I guess in this case, the same actually start putting the same excitation curve, but are we talking about the same frequency between the two operations? I mean, there has to be some difference. What, what do you mean by excitation? The frequency is that you have to apply Oh, yeah, then that depends on the quantum computer you, you are using, right? So basically, is the, the microwave pulse need to be corresponding to this operator. For example, Hadamard gate, you have a pulse sequence correspond to the Hadamard gate. And then, depends on your, whether it's a silicon qubit or whatever, you have certain frequency for your system, you just apply that pulse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they're different gates, right? Different gates, yes. Yeah. And this is, but, but maybe more complicated because this is quantum oracle, right? You, uh, yeah, uh, a little bit difficult to say. You might actually have a physical system to run it. Yeah. Okay, so we stop here today. I actually almost done with uh, my plan. Yeah.